Einstein became an instant celebrity after publishing his theory of general relativity in 1916, but the math was so complex it had little impact on mainstream physics for many years. But after his death in 1955, an experiment confirming one of his predictions made general relativity one of the most talked about topics in science. In 1959, um, a couple of physicists at Harvard, Pound and Repka, succeeded with a very elegant experiment in demonstrating that time is dilated, that it's affected by uh, gravity, which is one of the main predictions of general relativity. And so that spawned a great deal of interest and all of the, the world's physics community became interested again in, in relativity. In fact, there was so much interest. In 1962, a meeting was organized in Poland with 100 of the most influential physicists in the world, including Nobel Prize winners. Uh, also at the gathering, a young mathematician. But the most interesting person, as far as this story is concerned, is this young man in the middle here, 28-year-old New Zealander. This is Roy Kerr. U of A astrophysicist Fulvio Melia said not much was known about this legendary scientist, and after meeting Roy Kerr in New Zealand a few years ago, thought it important to tell a story. His book was recently published. It's called Cracking the Einstein Code, Relativity and the Birth of Black Hole Physics. Spent those two months sitting next to him in his office every day, um, and we essentially wrote the book together. Even though I ended up writing most of the text, um, a lot of the input, of course, came from him. So um, it was a joint effort, and, uh, and that's the reason why the book came into existence. It was an obvious thing to do for people of my generation and those following who would never know anything about this very important man and, and his colleagues from, uh, from the 20th century. Kerr's solution describes objects that we know today to be black holes. Even Einstein was skeptical they existed and it would have been very difficult to prove back in the early 1900s. And certainly there was no um, possibility while he was alive of using his equations to describe the effects of gravity uh, where gravity becomes so strong that space-time wraps around the object produces the, producing the gravity and closing that universe away from the other and causing a, a separation and causality between the two. Um, he never actually even believed that such objects could exist. And almost as soon as Kerr's solution came to light, physical proof was found of a black hole. This is an X-ray photograph of a supermassive black hole. Um, it's an example of a category of objects that we call quasars. In fact, this was the very first one discovered in 1963. So that's why that period, the golden age of relativity, was so influential, because it took relativity from a backwater theory, which was fading rapidly in the distance, back into the mainstream as probably the most relevant um, People who work with quantum mechanics might argue, but the most relevant description of nature, because it involves space and time, which are two very important elements of, of, of nature. Cracking the Einstein code is meant to convey the excitement of the time and the importance of solving Einstein's equations and the relevance that work has today. It's also about the personalities that made these discoveries for instance, one of the scientists who's well known for his work in relativity had his career cut short when he was shot in the Tower Massacre at the University of Texas. Everything we do with black holes is, is based, uh, in terms of interpretation and theoretical development, on what these individuals did in the 60s. So it, it was important to me because of that. But it's also a very interesting um, example of how the human element and science, scientific development, go hand in hand. And there's no better example of what happened with the golden age of relativity.